If you played Kirby on the N64, you've Crystal not played shards. real Kirby. It's yeah, no, Kirby, Crystal yeah. Shards. It's the best. I know. A lot of people think that because they've never played real Kirby. Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Vegas Press 17, and we're going to talk about how to split screen a conversation. Namely, I'm going to try and get me and Steven on the same screen while we're having a conversation. There are three challenges with this. First challenge, we need to sync the audio. The second challenge is we need to actually create the split screen. And the third challenge is we need to get the framing correct so that way we can see clearly the parts of the screen we want to see. So we're going to address all three challenges in this Vegas Pro 17 tutorial. Let's uh, first take a look. We're looking for the audio. If you want to see both at the same time, just kind of fade the top one. We're looking for an audio cue where we're both clapping at the same time. So two, three. <laughs> yeah, it's like probably 500 milliseconds yeah that's yeah my, that's, my, that's my guess that's funny because like so steven and i used a clapping technique where we both clap at the same time to create an audio waveform spike you can uh make your waveforms bigger or smaller by just hitting shift and up or down and uh that actually was was helpful in getting us roundabout synced uh, which is which is something that you're going to want to do now for me it was more important to get perfectly synced uh, than it was in this in this clip here let me show you wow we're that out of sync try again one two three <laughs> yeah this is even after the audio is synced we're still there's still a little bit of offness in the conversation. That's just because it was a digital conversation that happened over phone. So it doesn't matter if it's perfect. The reason I have to sync it like this is because he's actually recorded both my audio and his audio. And because I want to blend the audios together, I had to get a perfect sync in between my audio and his audio, which meant I had to go with the delay that he saw in the phone call. So that's actually just one of the challenges of the audio sync. But if you're doing a clap, together so you can compare the spike in the waveform and though this this is I said acceptable we're about one frame off uh, one thirtieth of a second off uh, that's acceptable offness because uh, the phone call just literally was that much off this is a true sync but this will get the clap will do a great job of getting your conversation close to where it needs to be for you to get started so don't sweat about having the clap perfect it's more about get using that to help get the everything synced now the next thing i would do before you do anything else is go ahead and hit control and highlight everything make sure everything is freshly highlighted and then hit the g key and then unhighlight it and try and move everything together and if everything moves together and cuts together you're in good shape that's what you want because you don't want to have to cut this thing into a bunch of tiny tiny pieces uh, and then resync everything constantly you want this whole conversation to be in sync now that you have it in sync so that's problem number one getting it in sync problem number two is getting to actually see both screens at the same time very interestingly what he filmed and sent me versus what I filmed are different because he had to actually compress his file to send it over the internet and so it's got a few challenges uh, and it's got some framing differences and things like that so first let's go ahead uh, I'm gonna change my mind I want my video on top because uh, of simplicity's sake right now because this is the more closer to framing frame that I'm looking for. We're going to go to video effects. Now there are th several different ways you can do this. You can do this by, I will show you real quick. You can do this by masking and actually drawing a mask. I have a tutorial about that. You can do this about with Bezier masking and actually drawing a mask with Bezier masking. I have a tutorial about that. But this is best done with the cookie cutter. Oh, you could also do it with, uh, with, uh, cropping to this effect but I find this effect kind of rough on your computer resources. The cookie cutter is more than enough to do this very very easily so you can drop the cookie cutter effect on there and look at this you can only kind of see it coming together uh, I'm going to do that there so it's easier to see so uh, I can grab right here with this center thing I can grab it and move it around the screen and I can change the size of it 
and I can change the border size as well. And so you're thinking, well, how do I get it centered? Well, just hit this little grid button. If you don't have it, you can hit this down arrow to find the grids. Hit the grid button, and then you can kind of see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine things in the grid. So uh, four, it will be the one after four. One, two, three, four. So it's this one. So I'm pretty close to lining it up. And you can actually grab this little dot on the screen too if you want a little more fine-tuned adjustment. So if we get rid of the grids, you can see right here that we have almost the effect achieved. However, we do have the letterboxing from uh, his render choices. And we also have uh, to get his eyes kind of up more on the upper third because uh, he, he looks like oddly smaller than me uh, because of the angle of the cameras and everything. So to get that fixed, we're going to make sure that as a rule for my editing this project, I'm only going to have on this track right here, this is now his designated track. This track belongs to this video. Nothing else will ever go here. And so I will actually change, not because you can do this with this event pan grot button. You can change his positioning and stuff. But because what if you have 100 cuts or if he had multiple takes from the same shot or something, you can actually go right here to the hamburger menu and hit track motion. And it's not motion tracking, it's the track's motion. It's the event pan trap for the track. And you can actually, I would turn off sync cursor because you just want one keyframe. You don't want to make a whole bunch of keyframes here unless you want to animate it. But then here you can actually, you can zoom in a little bit, grab the corner and pull it out. You can zoom in a little bit, you can get so there we go. I think that is a lot better for positioning. So that is the three main issues for syncing. Now to get them color synced, the best thing if he had a color card, the exact same color card, that would be amazing because then I could actually uh, color correct both of them and then make a LUT and put the LUT on both of them. Um, but that is not the case this time so I had to kind of, in the final video, this is, I'll color correct me and I'll make his color try to match by eyeballing it. Not ideal, but it worked. So that is uh, how to create a split screen conversation in Vegas Pro 17. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more. If you're new to editing in Vegas, check out my Udemy courses. Also, if you buy the software through my affiliates links, that helps me out a ton. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.